Hey guys, it's uh, Chris Wong here. Uh, for this video, I'll talk about signs that a relationship you're in is not a good one, and chances are your partner is thinking about walking out of a relationship. So this is based on my personal experience. Um, I've had a bad relationship before, and I'm currently in a great relationship. I'm actually engaged to her right now. Um, this is also based on uh, conversations I had with other people, what I've witnessed in other couples, and maybe uh, ideas I get from TV shows as well. So a quote I read on random photos was that a relationship is like a fart. If you force it, it's most likely shit. And I've used that quote for relationships and friendships. But I'll talk about friendships in a different video. So the first sign that the relationship may come to an end or that is a really bad relationship is there's a huge decrease in communication and initiation. So generally when a relationship starts, like you establish um, uh, partner, partner, boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, there'll be a lot of communication every day. Like the partners have a desire to see each other every day, to talk to each other for hours, to stay up late and chat. And normally, as the relationship progresses, the communication will decrease a bit because there's been an establishment that the relationship is great. So there's no need to stay up till three o'clock in the morning just to have a late night chat or to be very intimate. But in a bad relationship or when a partner thinks about uh, getting out of a relationship but doesn't want to be direct about it, there'll be a huge decrease to the point where there'll be like no initiation from the partner like that partner is trying to sign a sign, hopefully to make the other partner uh, mad enough or question why there's no initiation and then have a blame the other partner for causing all the problems. In mind, the partner who's not initiating is trying to get the other partner to end the relationship because that partner does not want to be direct about it. Uh, there's other signs as well, like uh, there'd be no um, interest in trying to initiate ideas to hang out. Uh, text messages, phone calls will be a lot shorter. And I'm not talking about like ending phone calls at like 10 or 11 o'clock at night just to go to bed early. I'm talking about like Instead of a, a one hour phone call, all of a sudden it becomes five minutes in a relationship. Maybe even one minute or 30 seconds. Uh, text messages may all of a sudden go from, okay, I'll see you there, to just a letter K. And the uh, responses would become a lot slower over time. So even in my current relationship, I may get responses um, responded within an hour or two hours, depending on when uh, she's available to um, respond back to me. And generally, if she's on her phone, she'll respond quickly as well. But when the relationship is considered bad and thinking of a way out, the... Uh, response time might be a lot longer instead of um, like three or five minutes like I get on a lot of messages in my current relationship it may take like five or six hours and the response may be like one word or one letter happy couples I've noticed even ones who are married for even like 10 years 20 years they talk to each other multiple times throughout the day. 
I would think in married couples, they would talk at the start of the day, like when they wake up. They may exchange a message or two or um, have a quick communication um, during lunchtime and maybe before um, coming home from work. And then they're going to spend time in the evening um, just enjoying the rest of the day. And that's considered like a happy couple. If they can do this at least five days a week and then their days off from work, it's to spend time together. Next sign is uh, there's a huge decrease or there's a denial of uh, sexual intimacy. So generally at the start of a relationship, even if you didn't know that the relationship is going to be a bad one, there could be a lot of sexual intimacy near the beginning of the relationship where you want to be all over each other every single day. And then as the uh, partner thinks about uh, getting out of the relationship or the relationship started becoming a problem overall, it decreases over time. And then it also um, becomes maybe almost none at all. So the, the partner over time who's thinking about getting out but doesn't want to be direct about it may find excuses why it cannot happen. And always try and say, we've got to find the right time. In most happy couples, sexual intimacy happens anytime. They don't always look for the right time. And each couple have, has established their own frequency. So whether it's twice a week, five times a week, 10 times a week, they have um, an understanding. But a person who is thinking about getting out of a relationship or thinking or having a bad relationship overall, it may not happen at all. And you can even follow signs like, like when you ask your partner, why is there no intimacy or just following up on uh, noticing that the intimacy has decreased a lot or not happening at all? Is there a reason? And if that partner gets very defensive about it and puts the problem on you, then that's a sign it's a bad relationship. It's also considered a bad sign if they use um, uh, exhaustion from work on a daily basis. But then when it comes to like um, hangout night with friends, they're willing to hang out with their friends and come home past midnight. But then they're willing to uh, go to bed at 10 o'clock on a daily basis. People in happy relationships are able to do both. Or they're more focused on the relationship itself. And if they both want sexual intimacy, they'll both find a way to get it done. Whether it's start of the day, middle of the day, end of the day, whether one partner is tired, they'll still find a way to get it done. The next sign that the relationship is going to be a problem in the future or it's not going to last is um, the increase in the amount of unnecessary fights. So let's say you and your partner had a discussion about um, a topic or you just brought up a, a statement or a joke and that partner, find, that partner found it funny or just like Okay, whatever. No issue. It's understandable. The same thing was said a few months later. And all of a sudden, it turns into a big fight. And it's pointed at you. That's a sign that the partner is trying to make you feel like you're the problem. And that the relationship is not good. Sometimes repetitive jokes don't get as funny later, and that's normal. But usually a good partner, 
who's happy to be with you will just be honest about it and say um, that it was funny the first time, but over time, it's not as funny to hear it too often. Can we just cut down on the joke? I could bring up um, a situation of uh, a fight I was in. And I was in a situation where we both went on a one or two day vacation where it was a two hour drive from where I was living. And I was actually supposed to uh, plan something like check reservations for like dinners or see what is to do in the area. And I myself only did like a very quick glance on like Google searches. I didn't do anything very thorough or spend more than 10 minutes on it because in my mind, I just thought I'll just find something when I'm there and just uh, winged it if I have to. And I never had experience with booking reservations for restaurants because I never did before. I always just went to the restaurant and just waited or just went to a restaurant that wasn't busy. And I remember I was in a situation where uh, my ex-girlfriend will um, get mad about that and was bringing up like other uh, flaws that happened early in the relationship she never brought in before and start using it to attack me. The lack of planning when we were there, I mean, I can kind of understand that I did say I was going to do some planning and I own up to my part, but because overall I didn't think it was such a big issue when we could have just done something differently for the whole day, this turned into um, such a big deal brought up by her. And I wasn't aware why it was such a big deal. That the whole evening was ruined and it was pointed at me 100%. I mean, the next day, it could have be forgotten and we could have just tried to enjoy the rest of the day while we were two hours away from home. And instead of uh, like trying to enjoy it and try to work it out, it turn into um, a conclusion that vacation's over, she wanted to go home. Me being that time, I didn't have much experience with relationships. And I originally thought I was the main cause of this failure of the vacation. I would admit, I did have a part in it, but I also admit the issue was very small, it could have been worked on easily to enjoy the rest of the vacation. But instead, it was 100% pointed at me for causing the whole vacation to be ruined. Now, considering the relationship was less than eight months, if I actually had more experience dating, I probably would have ended the relationship. Because the issue overall, I think, was minor compared to other issues that can happen in any relationship a lot of partners would have been more forgivable for issues that were even bigger than this and because from what i experienced she didn't want to talk to me for a week every couples do fight and it's normal they do fight but they learn to work it out very well so the next time that relationship you're in is considered a, a really bad one is if your partner feels happier when there's other friends or other family members at the same event. And if they're a lot nicer to everyone there than to you. A happy couple is generally happy to be together alone time on a regular basis, even seven days a week. But if that partner puts on 
and act just to appear nice at social events, but cannot even be nice to you. You want to ask yourself, is this relationship worth it? Because in most relationships or in happy couples, the partner is happiest when hanging out with you than with other people. And the last line I can come up with for this video is how often they would um, invite you over or how often you try to invite your partner over in a situation when, let's say, uh, you live with your parents and your parents finally go on vacation. So that means you have a whole house to yourself for a few days, a week, maybe two weeks. I asked many couples this, who in that, in that situation, and I asked them, when your parents go on vacation, you have the house to yourself, and you're in a happy relationship, what's the first thing you have in mind now that you have the house to yourself? They all said the same thing. They're going to bring it up to their partner, and they're going to invite their partner over to stay over as much as possible. And I remember I was in a situation in that bad relationship where towards the end, I had a weekend to myself. Partner didn't want to come over because she wanted some alone time. But at the same time, she knew how to act nice in public events and to go to work. And then towards the end, she had two weeks to herself uh, because her parents were uh, on vacation. So in those two weeks, I was not considered to come over. We still hung out outside the house just to, um, to talk, but not one of those days she considered inviting me over to spend the night. I thought that just came out to me that another sign the relationship will probably fail and or it's a very bad relationship is if your partner expects a lot of changes in you to the point that you're giving up who you really are. So let's say for example, you have a lot of habits that you don't want to change or habits that make you who you are. If you have a lifestyle that your partner doesn't like, but it's who you really like to be. And that person wants you to give it up. It's going to be a lot on you to be with that person if you're going to have to give it up. And another thing to consider too is that person wants you to make a certain amount of money or wants you to work a certain career. Those are signs. It's not a good relationship. I met a guy who was into bodybuilding and he told me he had many relationships in the past. He told me one of his ex-girlfriends wanted him to give up bodybuilding to be together. And bodybuilding, he said, is his life. He enjoys it and he wouldn't give it up. So given an ultimatum, he chose bodybuilding over being with this person. He's now happy with a partner who accepts him for him. And he's married to her with three kids. Now when it comes to um, careers or how much money you make, the partner should still love you for you. Whether you bring in 100000 or whether you bring in $30,000 a year. The partner who expects you to get a new job because you only make 30000 a year just to live a huge lavish lifestyle is not going to be a happy relationship for long. Because if you enjoy working that $30,000 job or you don't qualify for a $100,000 job, you, com you completely change your identity, how you feel mentally to do a job that pays $100,000 if you really hate the job 
and you lose yourself in it. I know everyone's working these days just for a paycheck. But happy couples accept each other for how much money they make. And they work together to have a lifestyle that works for both their paychecks. In my previous relationship, one of the reasons why the partner ended the relationship was because I didn't make much money. She was claiming that she was making more progress in her life because she got a new job and she was ready to buy a house. And I said to myself, after the relationship was done, that's not what I want in a relationship at all. I don't have any problems or I don't think any person had any problems if the partner would suggest or bring up concerns about not bringing home enough income. So one of the final signs I can think of for today is if the expectations of your partner and your expectations are completely different. If you're a type of person who doesn't have high expectations to be happy in a relationship, like you're on a scale of anywhere between one and four out of 10, and your partner has an expectation on, on a 10 out of 10 level, or even a 12 out of 10 level, this relationship is not going to be happy long term. So in terms of thinking of expectations between yourself and the partners, if it's way off, most likely that will mean for the partner to have the relationship to work, it's going to have to be the partner's way or the highway. And you got to ask yourself, is this a relationship you want? So I hope my um, points are very helpful and I hope... Uh, my personal experience um, will help you guys. If you have any uh, uh, further questions or if you'd like me to make more videos about um, relationships or any other topics, just let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, uh, please uh, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to listen to any more of my content, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys.